Welcome back it's to Plots Politics and let's move to our next discussion. Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki emerged as the governorship candidate for the People's Democratic Party PDP in the state gubernatorial election. He achieved this feat after his closest rival, Ken Matsuagbon, stepped down from the race minutes into the primary election. With his victory, Obaseki faces his political rival, Osage Uzeyamu, of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and other candidates for the September 19 governorship election. Who will win this race? Joining us to throw more light on this is Reverend Olu Martins, a public affairs analyst who is joining us via Zoom from Edo State. Good evening, uh, Olu Martins. Hi, good evening. And good and, to be on air again. Yeah, and we have uh, Dikbo Olayokun, a public affairs analyst, who is also joining us via phone. Let's get the conversation started. Let me start with you, Olu Martins. Uh, I, I think uh, I recall on this program that uh, even before Obaseki joined PDP, you predicted that that option is open for him. So now he has emerged. What next? Well, I mean, clearly is that um, people, uh, it was Shakespeare that said that there are times and tides in the affairs of man which when taken leads ultimately to prosperity, but which when forgotten will lead to misery. Uh, so it was an opportunity. All of the things that happened is for uh, Governor Gordon Abbasaki to first of all know his, his true friends uh, and know his true enemies in a, in a, in a political context. Because like you say, uh, in politics there are no permanent friends or permanent uh, men. But now that he has secured the ticket of the People's Democratic uh, um, Congress, he has a, a structure to work with. Do not forget that Edo State has three senators, like every other state, and two of them of the People's Democratic Party. There are nine um, House of Rep members, and five of them are from the People's, uh, of the people's Democratic stock. Uh, so the People's Democratic Party was already on ground. When you now add the strength and capacity, the vigor and the ability of the governor and his crew, I uh, know that that's a huge moral booster um, for the governor. And going forward, it's now for us, and I say us now, those of us who, though, are not members of the party, but believe in the astute leadership and managerial capacity of Mr. Governor to reach out to the electorate who already know um, what the governor is and what he stands for, and then uh, to campaign and to ensure that 2020 you know, and 20 to 2024 guaranteed for Godwin. Now, Gega say, you know, um, why this is going to be easy? Because on the one side, the APC has a candidate that has, a, what he has is on paper, his potential. I want, this is what I want to do. When you put that side by side, somebody who is saying that this is what I have done and this is what I have continued to do, it becomes a very easy campaign. It's like a man who has a wife. No matter the challenges that okay. he has with that wife, I'm sure that he's unwilling to go and try another woman, because he says that even if this one, no matter how it is, we understand each other. People already know what God in the stands okay. for uh, in terms of the developmental stride, which has received a whole lot of accolade, both home, uh, you know, and away. So, okay. Uh, I, 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 I do not want to. to I don't want like, to go. In, I don't want to go into that uh, yeah. analogy because it's quite subjective. But let's let's look at. Uh, uh, do we have Dipo on the line now? Hello. Yes. Uh, let's get your opinion on this. Uh, from the language of our guest in Edo State, it appears the coast is so clear, or is clearer for Obaseki. Do you share that opinion? Looking at the hurdles he had to cross within a few days before the primaries, he became a, an aspirant. There was a court issue. It was settled out of court. And we also have a, an aspirant who said on the national TV that he would not step down. He even said that even if it means dying. And probably, uh, let me just play that track for you before I get your comment. Do we have uh, that sound bite? Let's hear what uh, Maswagbon said some days ago. 
where is our conscience as human beings? Which church do we go to? Which mosque do we worship in? That we cannot even do the right thing. You're living in 72 hours to come and take a ticket of a party. And you want me to submit my 16 years of labor of pain, of torture, of defeat, of tears, of moments I don't, I didn't have money. There were moments in these 16 years I received shame, I received disappointment, and I'm not going to accept it. I'd rather die for you to take that ticket by force. It's not going to happen. We will not do it without the collectivity, the collective interest of the Edo people and the Nigerian people. I knelt down, they laid their hands on me, and they prayed for me. So what will I not tell Josh, a boy who's 11? That was the voice of Ken in Matsuagbon saying that he would rather die. But we saw him bow to that. Dipo, are you surprised where I am too? Surprised that he stepped down with eventually Yes, after making are that you, statement. Are you saying surprised that uh, he stepped down at the end? Yes. No, I wasn't surprised. Okay. Nigerians, politicians are wonderful people. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we watched that uh, interview with my debut with my said that. If I let me put it on record, and it was uh, an exclusive uh, interview with Plots TV Africa. It was an exclusive interview where he made that statement. So continue. Yes, I said we watched it I'm in the midst of with some friends. And uh, interestingly, the consensus among us after that statement was that the man would step down. Hmm. Because at that time, he was under intense and immense pressure. Because there's a need for us to know where the PDP was coming from. When the current uh, APC governorship candidate left uh, PDP, naturally, the political party was still very bad. And uh, so getting to, uh, the governor, Obaseki, as the uh, candidate, is a very big plus for them. One, he is the incumbent governor. Then two, he is, seems to have been victimized, so to speak. And that is the picture some people are painting. And then there is this belief that there could be what we call sympathy vote. So the moment he joined them, and a lot of horse trade that went into it, it has become very necessary for the PDP to deliver. So it means that they will do whatever it is within their means to make sure that all the candidates, all the other apparents withdraw. Because it will be very difficult and very dangerous to go into primaries with uh, somebody who is just coming into their party and matching him against somebody who has been in the party, who has familiarized with him with the grassroots of the party. Because don't forget that the grassroots of the party are going to be involved in primaries. So there was a need for the PDP to make sure nobody contested against uh, uh, the governor. So that was, uh, on that basis, there was intense pressure. And that was why the man was, that was what the man was trying to tell us, that he was under pressure to withdraw for overtaking. Because it would have been very dangerous to go into that contest with somebody who has been in PDP for four years against somebody who is just coming out. And politicians can be very funny. <laughs> you never can know what they will do with that, their <laughs> fellow paper. So that was why it was very necessary for PDP so make sure you let me quickly get your take on this before I go to Lou Martins. Let me quickly get your take on it before. Let me quickly get your take before I go back to Lou Martins. Uh, do you also believe that largely the major foe that Tobaseki has is a uh, 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 and it seems to be out of the way? Do you think he should just look straight into uh, Izeyamu and not uh, Oshomole again? Um, Karate. Politicians are very powerful individuals. Politicians know how to pull the strings. And let me tell you one thing many people don't understand. Elections has to do with grassroots. 
people like you and I that are blowing grammar on television and radio, that are very active on, on, on social media, we don't vote. We don't vote. You know the funny thing? On the day of election, it's either we are in one television station or one radio station to be analyzing voting as what is going on, or we sit down in our sitting room watching uh, Plus uh, TV Africa, looking at how elections are going. The people that go out to vote, they don't know anything about all these shenanigans going on. It is the person that controls them that tells them where to go, go on the day of election. And that is why to win elections, it takes more than what we do on television and radio. It takes more than what we do at political campaign rallies. But how to penetrate the uh, Yasikira that is selling paper? Baba Shakiru that is selling uh, meat. How to tell them? They, don't, they are not bothered about okay. whether government has paid or not. I, I think I got your They are not bothered about whether is currently with our security or not. I, I got Who your did response. they say we should vote for? That's the person they will vote for. The person they I got your response. Uh, 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 Martins, you are, I think it's okay to say you are more on ground in a dual state. What do you really, what do you think played out? Do you, did you foresee that it was going to be a consensus uh, candidate? And how, what do you make out of um, the issue of Oshomale no longer Hehodu for Baseki to get to become the winner? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, even though <coughs> the boys in Lagos but he has spoken like a brilliant analyst who has his hands uh, on several fronts as far as uh, political participation is all about. Um, it didn't come to us as a surprise because in his opening remark, he did say, I rightly so too, that the disqualification of the governor from his erstwhile party, the All Progressive Congress, presided over as a matter of, as a matter of fact by his principal foe, his S.Y. godfather, and then we had a crisis between a wannabe godfather and an unwilling godson. We had advised at that time that if it was possible, uh, at that social policy should have recruited itself because the Latin matrix is Nemo Judai Kassasua. But instead, we saw the man reading on his armchair, same committee was the uh, uh, appeal court under the NWC, which he chairs, is the Supreme Court. In other words, he's the Chief Justice as far as that matter uh, was caught. And we advised him. So when all of that began to it's nature, it is nature that you can't be the accuser and also the judge. And if you do that, the forces of nature are going to be against you. And that is exactly you know, what happens, what happened to um, Adam Sashomone. Before we knew what was happening, there was so much ground sympathy, even those who were undecided uh, began to think that, come, it's better to have the power of an ant and to use them as an elephant, than to have the power of an elephant and to use it as an ant. We saw on national television how vociferous and forceful and, um, you know, bombastic the erstwhile national chairman was. And just, we just knew that, like Chino and Chibi said, those who have had their pampernels cracked for them by the spirits should please remember okay. the of the land going forward. And if forgot, it didn't come, come to us as a surprise. As I'm talking to you now, even in those stages, it's part of the COVID-19. On the 26th of every month, salaries you know, are paid. This governor doesn't use siren. The governor of the commission is a conservative technocrat who does things according to you know, to, rule, to be rule book. When Adam Sashomole, you know, was there. So the ground for my, because he didn't want to share the people's money with some people who consider that politics is their career okay. and that they are the owners of the party. Uh, when they moved against him, the people okay. understood well, that well, the Martins, power in the people I, is I, I suspect that the people. campaign has already started. Uh, we don't have oh, so time for that. So the consensus for the PDP uh, Reverend Olu Martins. wasn't surprising at all. Sorry, I have to quote in there. Our time is far spent, and we expect that the campaign has already started, and um, we'll find out from the Edo people where the pendulum will swing. Thank you for your time. Reverend Olu Martins is a public affairs analyst, and thank you so much, Dipo Olayoku, a journalist and also a political 
analyst for your time. We quite appreciate your time with us. It's always, it's always, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, I will be giving you my take, especially on this issue. Stay with us. And here is my take. Why politicians may be basking in the euphoria and probably living in self-denial that they are coasting home to victory. Political pundits are unanimous that the political and legal fireworks have just begun. Where is the pendulum swinging is too an early question to ask. Indeed, the decider is the Edo people. The deciders are the Benis, the Esakor, the Auchis, the Isans, the Agenebodes, and other non-Edo indigenous and others. Yes, tribal uniqueness is our reality, but it should not be the basis of our choice of candidates. Our choices should be informed by track record of good governance, selfless service, all-inclusiveness, and most importantly, our fundamental human rights as guaranteed in the Constitution. September 19th is some weeks away. But before then, politicians will come to you to reel out your plans, their plans and promises. While oratory is one of the key ingredients of a good leader, see through their words and make a wise choice. You will not regret it in four years' time. The kind of choice you will make that you will not regret. And that's our program this evening. Plus Politics returns on Monday, same time. Until then, stay safe.